hello, you've chosen the hard way to create the Geneva wheel. So in this video I'll show you how this route took me down basically a rabbit hole. I got there in the end of actually creating the wheel, but I hit some problems. But I thought it was well worth placing this video up to show you how I resolve these problems if you ever find them in the future. There is another video of how to do the Geneva wheel using a different tool um, in Sketcher called the Construct, uh, this tool here, which is called, uh, Construction Mode. And I use that to actually create the template to actually uh, remove material from the original will. Uh, this way I don't use Construction Mode and I show you how the fillet tool can go extremely wrong sometimes and how you get broken faces. But on the other hand, I'll show you how to fix them and how to actually uh, almost do like a she uh, uh, sorry a tree shaking exercise to actually find where those broken faces are okay so hope you enjoy this video it's a bit long but remember the other ones there have had to do it a lot quicker than this one okay so now we've got the base geometry I am going to pad this to make sure everything's okay so we go close and pad and as you can see <coughs> excuse me all is fine. So undo the pad and jump back straight into the Geneva wheel. And the next thing to do is actually duplicate this up four times. Uh, sorry, three, to three times. So, and actually remove these sections, rotate these sections 90 degrees and remove them from the actual sketch itself. Now, FreeCAD what I know of doesn't have this kind of feature as of yet um, so we have to do this manually and we have to be pretty careful when doing this because what we're going to actually do is create a clone sorry a copy of this sketch and actually move the geometry we don't want so the first thing we need to do I'm going to clean this up and actually hide some of these constraints within here so we'll go over to our tasks and I'm going to drop this down to datums and start hiding the constraints. Lucky enough this isn't a big object so there's not many constraints in here. So always remember to scroll up to the top so we can actually see our solver messages here if anything goes wrong. So now we've removed, removed the um, visibility of the constraints and select the whole lot. <coughs> and then I'm going to go out to sketch. Now I'm going to go sketch your tools and copy. Now I'm going to just make a copy over to the left hand side. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this sketch slowly, this geometry slowly and see if there's anything out of pan with the uh, with the actual constraints so we're looking good so far oh so there you saw that actually snapped around then so there's actually some problems with the actual geometry itself so look there we go so it's snap off, off center there so let's put it back to normal so we've got to fix that and the way I would fix this is put a line across here strain the two points 236 there and place a zero, zero degree angle on there so create a line Strain our vertex, our points, and then constrain these two lines to an angle of zero. So, for completing the constraints, uh, for the constraints, twenty. So, let's have a look. See if we can find twenty. So, that one there. Let's get rid of it. And now I'm going to scroll this back up to the top so we can see the solver messages. 
if you have a bigger screen you may you may see those anyway so but I, I'm on quite a small screen here so let's stick the angle on so we've got angle constraint there so that should have solved our issue let's have a look see if it has yep looks like we're all good brilliant the trouble is when we get rid of the parts that we don't need because we don't need this part or this part here because we're looking at the parts that we're going to actually remove from this this geometry over here we're going to start losing um, as you can see we've lose, lost our constraints so we need to put these back in so the first thing we do is I'm just constrain those two vertices there those two points of clicked and drawn a square around those to select those two constrain those and constrain, constrain the mouth here okay nope doesn't like that get to that um, let's just have a look okay Yep. So constraints the length. Just stop it moving out. Good. And I want to constrain. I do want to constrain this mouth to keep them together. Actually. Constrain these two with a equality. That should stop that mouth from opening. There we go. So you know, constrain those with a length value point thirty two. So let's have a look. Oh no, that was the constraint we just added. So actually the first I'm gonna constrain these two here. So I'll move those now. That's good. And I'm going to try to constrain those two again. Cancel that, make sure this is up to the top so I can see what's happening. Valid. Hmm. Not sure the reason why that is. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain those points there. to here. Oops, one. And oh, I just undid that constraint. Let's put that back in. And I'm going to constrain those two. Hopefully. There we go. So that's nicely constrained now. And we can actually start um, using that on our shape over here. So let's move to our shape. And the first thing I want to do is actually strain up this shape. So um, I for one know there was an issue when I started rotating this with this line as and added this line. So I'm going to do the same here, and that's going to be useful when we start actually creating our 90 degree rotations and actually starting removing material so I'm going to add a line in press escape and constrain the points 
and the same for this one. And I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to put a horizontal constraint here, so we've actually constrained that to the right. So we can now actually use this geometry and start to include it in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this and make a clone. Sorry, make a copy. Sketch tools and copy. And I'm just going to place this up here. And always check your copy to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. No problems at all. So just going to plunk that off page for a second and work with this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is constrain the middles. And I'm going to go down here and find that constraint and just rename it so I know where the constraint is. And remember go to go back to all and it'll be the last constraint I had. There we go. And that's I want to keep actually I want to keep the number 55 and I want to call it uh, so trim shape mid 55 Okay, so that's great. So we've got that constraint in the middle now, and we should still have to rotate this around. So if we look at our shape, what we've created is a the basics of a um, the shapes that we want to actually cut into this shape here. So we've just got to remember that when we start rotating this around that anything it overlaps has to be removed. Come on. So when we rotate it around, so that's about 90 degrees is there. So when this line straightens, without a constraint on there, so, so we know exactly what to do. So we want to remove material. Let's remove the material here and here. <coughs> And also make sure that these points join up correctly. Now, the first thing to remember is that if we highlight this uh, edge here, you can see this runs all the way along. So when we hit the trim tool, should see that edge disappears, which that's what we didn't want it to do. So we control Z that. And what I'm gonna do is actually the reason why it's doing that is this this line here Needs to, so I'll show you again. So we try to trim this, it will remove. So we need to take, make sure that this line extends across this line here. So what you will notice if you try to trim this side, it will actually work. So I'll trim there. You can see that that's trimmed away from the edge there which is what we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on here and I'm going to put a length in of 130 just to extend that outwards and it won't do that. Why is the reason that? Ah, it's because I've got this equality here. 
So get rid of the equality constraint and we'll extend this to 130. Hopefully this time it'll allow me. And why is the reason why it's not allowing me to do that? Mm -hmm. Let's bring this up to the top. Let's put the equality constraint back in because I might need that in a minute to show you something. And make sure it looks like we've lost our constraint here. Let's bring that back in at 90 degrees. It's better. Now we want to bring this out. So let's watch what happens. So I'm going to go 130. So if only constraints 111. Please remove at least one of the following constraints 111, 12, and 21, etc. etc. So one should be good. What's that one? There. So let's remove that one. Delete. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, extend this out. 130. No, still a problem. Why is that? Bear with me. Full of constraints 20, uh, 20, 22, 24. Let's look 20, 22, 24. 20. Okay, I can keep that one. 22. And 24. Ah, that's one we want to get rid of. Delete. Okay, so bring this up to the top just in case we get another problem. 130. There we go. So that's shifted out now. We also have to be careful with this because this is shifted out itself as well. Um, so we need to push that back in. So the reason why I shifted out is because this is a quality constraint here. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to get rid of this quality constraint and try again. There you go. So I shifted out now, which is good. So now I can use the trim tool on that to actually remove material in there. Let's just look in here. So we've got this part here which is sticking out as well, which is good. So hit the trim. So we've trimmed that and that's made sure those sides have connected. Trim that part and zoom right in here and trim there as well. That's good. That's what we wanted. So now I should have to trim this part here. No, we still no, we still got a problem here. So let's undo that. Let's undo back a bit. And so we've still got this part in here. And I'm going to leave that there. And what I'm going to do, I didn't mean to press escape. I'm going to Trim this again. Nope. So I'm going to try to attach that to this with the fixed point constraint on there. Now let's see if we can trim it. That was interesting. That looks good. Okay. So last but not least, I'm going to trim that bit here. So that should be good. Hopefully we haven't got any open uh, faces. Let's just check. And we've got something going on there. So 
Let's zoom in. Now I'm going to start moving these up and down and see what, the, what happens. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these vertices and constrain them. I'm going to zoom in here. I've moved that, removed that part. So let's remove the layer. Okay, so let's escape that. So when I move this, you can see that's all nicely attached. And the same on this side. Remember to undo so we can get back to where we normally where we was and check this side as well. So that looks good. And we can check our work by removing the lines here and also removing our clone up here. And then actually going back and padding. There we go. So this is all nicely padded now and it's working. So we're actually getting somewhere. Um, let me just go back to the Geneva world itself and get my clone back on screen, which I've got there. back a bit too far but that's good so if I go back a couple of steps steps I'll show you what will happen if you had some of that geometry still in there or some broken edges yeah so I broke some of the edges there so let's get rid of that geometry get rid of these lines and go back to the Geneva wheel Close it and try to pad it. So already I can see there's a problem here. Pressing OK, fail to value the broken faces. So this is a reason why you have to um, overlap lines sometimes, increase those lines out, so you can actually trim the Geneva wheel correct, uh, trim those those correctly, and make sure they're all in shape. And the way you make sure that they're, they're actually all connected up is just by moving these lines and seeing if they separate like well, that one separated there. So we'll just highlight that edge. So those two vertices are, or two points are highlighted and we reattach those together, constrain those together. And we make sure that we don't have any parts like this part here just overhanging, pressing escape and making sure that when we move, oops, let's zoom out, see what's going on there. When we start to move geometry. We don't get any weirdness of lines breaking. When you get crossover like this, this is because of constraints. You've gone beyond the constraint, so it will start snapping back. So that's good. So remember that when we check the pattern, we need to get rid of our, our clone. And also we need to get rid of our guidelines. So we're going to start actually placing in the other slots. So I'm going to pull in my base object and I'm going to strain it to the middle. And I'm also going to constrain these two lines to 90 degrees. <coughs> so now we've uh, constrain that, we can actually zoom in and have a look at what we have. So 
you can see here our lines have actually gone over slightly which in a way is good because we can fill it those quite nicely so, so let's have a look at this one as well so those are slightly over as well so we should be able to fill it this without any problems he says so we can't fill it that one and we can't fill it that one so let's have a look what's going on here so the first thing I'm going to do is delete my constraints now what I have to be careful of if I try to increase the length of this line then we're going to start pulling out this arc so let's undo that So the reason why that is, is that there is some constraints on here. So sketch, uh, sketch tools, select a constraint. So that's selected the constraint there, but hasn't selected any others because I've had them hidden. You just seen up on the left hand side when I did that, what other constraints that has. So sketch, sketch tools, select constraints. So three constraints there we have a look you can see them in here so I'm gonna remove those constraints but keeps uh, one of them sketch tools select constraint so 33 I'm gonna keep 35 and 37 can go. So now we should be able to pull this out without any, uh, any problems, which we can. So I'm going to now put a horizontal constraint on there. I'm just going to pull this out slightly. And the same from this one down here. So click on there. Go to sketch, sketch tools, select constraint, so we've got angle constraint, which is good, and length constraint, which I want to get rid of. And now I should be able to pull this out. But you can see this constraint here is still moving. So I'm going to get rid of this one, and we should be good to go. Now we've uh, pulled those sides out, we can use the fillet tool and actually remove that material inside. And we can see that we've actually uh, attached our geometry, reattached it to the sides there. So I'm going to get rid of this material which is great so now we should have material that is connected now we also need to do the same over here and get rid of this part here so let's move this into view now I'm going to try the fillet tool on here and obviously nothing's happening so we could have an issue here somewhere so I could try attaching this to the line and then try to fill it all again and that's what we didn't want to happen so obviously got something going on here so if we just zoom in let's say our line is probably the line is over there which is good and is our line attached here so 
see our line sits over here. I would expect that to actually fill it, but I'm guessing because it's not attached to the line, then we have an issue. I'm going to remove that constraint here, and I'm going to remove the constraint here. And this might be in the, the issue actually. There we go. So that's removed. So it was due to the constraints that I had on, had on there. So I want to add the last slot in here, but my problem that I've, I've got now is that I've actually used one of my clones, or well, my last clone up in here. So I'm going to actually extract out the geometry again and reconstrain it, but I'm going to reconstrain it in a different way to what we had before using more geometric, uh, geometric constraints rather than length constraints. We still need some of the length constraints in there, but this might be a bit easier to work with. So the first thing I want to do is clone out this geometry here. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm just going to move this into position. I'm pressing down shift at the moment to actually move this in position. Shift works with the touchpad um, option down here. So I can actually move this in position. So I'm going to select the geometry I want and select this line, this curve here. And I'm going to go out to sketch, sketch tools and copy that geometry. And I'll move it all the way down here. We don't want to get mixed up with this point here because that's actually to do with this geometry here. So move our sketch a bit so we can see what we're doing. So forgetting this point because this is the diameter of this arc sorry radius of this arc and this is our middle point here. So the first thing I want to do is start constraining this because at the moment there's a lot of movement in the sketch which we don't want, want to happen. So first thing first is I want to get rid of this horizontal constraint here. So that's gone. And I'm going to put these two lines into parallel because they run parallel with each other. And also, now I've done that, as you can see, in parallel, also I'm going to make these two lines equal as well. So they should be parallel and equal. So they keep the same length and they keep parallel to each other. Control Z to actually bring this sketch back to where it was. And what I'm also going to do is put these into these two here, this line here and this line here, into parallel as well. So we've now got that point parallel to the sketch as well. So these two points here need to be anchored together. So we highlight those, uh, click and drag to highlight the two. And the two are highlighted. And click on the point constraint. And now that's nicely constrained. Now one thing that we have got is that we've got the length of this is actually being, being allowed to actually see be mobile. So if we put a length restriction on here, and now that should be nice, quite actually um, stretch and stretch and uh, uh, increase the length of this line here. And we need to do the same on here as well, the length restriction. Also need to uh, plug in my battery. Well with me. And we should see that this is all nice starting to get nicely restricted now. Um, got quite a bit of geometry restrictions in there. And now we need to actually restrict this arc geometry down. So I'm going to do that by making sure the length of this two, these two are 
always fixed. And that means the only geometry we, we, part of this arc we need to restrain now is this part here. Now we may be able to do it with a radial construction. Let's try it. Mm, no, that's not working. Let's undo that. So we may have to do this with a another length restriction here. Sorry, wrong one. For a length restriction here. And obviously we need one more because this point is quite mobile. And a length restriction there. Oop. So can't set the datum because the sketch contains conflicting constraints. So we need to simplify this. So we go up to the top so we can see what we're doing. And try that one again. One, six, two, three, bleh. so 75, 74. I'm going to go backwards because those would be my last ones I've added. Still getting a curve, but we can actually fix that by doing the oops, the radius, and that should be good to go. So that's all good. So that's restrained, restricted right down, and restrained so it, it will stop um, from deforming as we move it around our sketch. So that's all good. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to move this in position. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually highlight it and have a look at our constraints. See if they've been selected. So that's, unfortunately our constraints haven't been selected in here. I know most of my constraints are the last ones that I've added. So I can work way back back actually hiding them so those are all hidden now I don't have to worry about these because they don't really get in the way it's only the decimal constraints that really get in the way and what I'm going to do is also hide some of the constraints of our main geometry itself as well. Let's go to our filter. Look at our filter to make life easier and go to datums. And we can scroll through and see which ones are visible. That'll do us. That makes things a lot easier to understand and see what we're actually doing. So I'm going to move this into position and I'm going to anchor it to the center. Now this is showing me I've selected three points, so that's no good. So let's try that one again. There we go. And I'm going to sweep this around. Let's 
I'm going to set an angle between this line and this line of 90 degrees. So that's locked in position now, so I can actually start removing the geometry from this side using the trim tool. So we'll do that. So I'm going to zoom in. So look at this, this geometry is just over here, so I'm wondering if that's going to help us. Because when I hit the trim tool and remove that section, there we go, so it's reattached in there. So we should be good. And we want to do the same over here. Which it's not doing, so see we have a bit of an issue here. So if we attach this, this point to this line, and the same on this side, this point to this line, and hopefully we'll be able to trim this now. There we go, so that's trimmed, but we've got an issue there that that's actually missed. It's correctly trimmed here, but for some reason it's missed there. So I'm going to control Z that. Let's have a look at the geometry over here. Let's see what's going on. Now, it's probably to do with certain constraints that we have. Remember all the constraints that we had, so I'm going to leave the angle constraint in, and because all the other constraints are there, that diameter constraint I'm going to remove because obviously, when we start attaching lines, they may shift by points of millimeters, so that will stop it from actually trimming properly. Let's move that diameter constraint and let's just throw all these back in so you can see them. And I am going to shift, select them, and delete. So that's good because those constraints become invalid once we start adding. Um, all the geometry together, so I should be able to attach that point to this line. And attach that point. That point is already attached to this line, so that's good. So hopefully our fillet will work. Oops. So we still got, do we still have a constraint somewhere? Yeah, we have this constraint here, which is just the quality constraint. That's what we saw. I don't like this one, so I'm just going to delete that. So that's gone. Let's try now. Nope, we've still got problems. We're just creating a circle over here, and I don't know the reason why. That's attached there, that's attached there. That looks like the constraints taken now. Don't know what I did, because my other half come in. Hello, you right? <laughs> Bear with me, I just got to finish this video. I don't know what just happened. Um, 
ah, it was this constraint that was attached to this line here. So if I delete that, we'll add it in. And now I remove this line to fill it. And we've now got a workable object for a Geneva wheel. Now I'm just going to test this by removing the lines from the center, which was our degree angle constraints. And I'm going to close Sketcher. And I'm going to go into the part design. And I'm going to pad. And we can see we've got some problems now. So I have to sort those problems out and figure out what they are. I've had a look at the geometry and what I can see is that by pulling out the sides, there's a lot of attached lines that are being attached on the actual uh, surface itself, which is causing a problem with uh, a broken geometry. It's causing the face to be broken. So the way to solve that is actually get rid of these points around here and actually select the, the points on the side, so the two vertices, and restrict them down. So the same here, restrict these two. You can see now that these, if I move them about, don't actually break anymore. But you can see those two there have broken. Controls like that, and so I've got to take away the actual constraint to a line, and actually, so it's this one that's causing the issue, and constrain these two points together. Now I'm just going to keep on doing this around the corners, and the same for this one. If I pull it out, you can see how they separate. Just remove. And constrain and this one here should have the same problem yep you can see them starting to separate there just remove hitting delete to remove and then just press and hold in to create a um, area selection around there select those two points so there's those two vertices sitting there and hit constrain And I think that's about it. So we've got no more um, the called fix a point onto an object constraints anymore. So this should pad. Got no errors and the actual object has padded correctly. So there we've actually completed our Geneva wheel or Mortise Cross, whatever you want to call it. And we can actually start on the pinwheel in the next tutorial.